Hey there, and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch. And in this video, we're gonna check out this. This is the MSC242, which is an industrial single board computer. And in this case, it's a 486, complete with memory slots, CPU socket, and all the I.O. that we need, presumably. But it's on a 16-bit ISA card. So how does this work? And can we play some games on it? In this video, we're gonna check it out. So let's go. The MSC242 was made in 1997 by Mitak Industrial Corporation. They specialized in all kinds of solutions for industrial computing. Single boards computers like this would have been used running diagnostics in a chemical plant or they could run the software that controls an assembly line. They are easier to maintain as compared to a normal computer. Replacing a computer like the one I have that is not working is as simple as removing the ISA card and slotting in another. This keeps downtime as low as possible. These boards also need to be able to handle heat, dirt or the shocks of vibration. For that purpose these boards are made with industrial grade components contrary to your consumer PC. Small motherboards are nothing new of course. Here is a mini ITX mainboard that I'm using for a different project. But this is a complete motherboard on an ISA card. So we need to slot this into an ISA bus and we cannot slot it into an existing computer because that existing computer already has its own RAM, its own CPU, its own IO. To make this work, we need an ISA backplane. So we slot the card into this backplane and then we can hook up a power supply and then we can slot in other ISA cards that our computer can then use. Because if you look closely at the IO, it doesn't have VGA out or any sound. Now I don't have a computer case that fits this little board. There are open air computer cases for mining rigs and such and for mini ATX boards, but nothing that fits this very well. So I did what every grown man does when he needs to build something quickly. I used Lego. <laughs> It doesn't look like much, but this actually works pretty well. Let me show you how everything goes together. Going over the board from left to right, here are two 72-pin SIM slots, which can hold a maximum of 64 megs of memory. Here's a floppy drive connector, an IDE connector, a parallel port connector, a buzzer. Here is a custom chip for this motherboard, real-time clock, a BIOS chip, an external header for an add-on card. Here is the chipset for the main board. Here is the CPU and here is 8 times of 32k of cash. And on the back we have two serial ports and two PS2 ports. So let's first add some memory. I'm gonna add a 64 meg compact flash card. For video I'm going with this Trident TVGA 9000C and for sound I'm going with the Sound Blaster Pro CT1600. The only card that isn't held in place by the LEGO is this uh, VGA card. Perhaps I should have built a little rig on top. Let's hook up a power supply and a monitor and see if it boots. I didn't mention this before, but the CPU socket came pre-populated with a 486 CPU. Not sure which one, but we're gonna find out pretty soon. Now we do, don't have a power on and off switch, but we do have a PS on connector here on the main board. So let me connect five volts in ground and then connect that up to my flipper zero and just kickstart it like that. That should work. That's power sorted. Now we need VJ. Thank you, robot. We need a keyboard and we need speakers for the sound. Hey, there we go. Which CPU do we have? An AMD X5. Let's play some games. First game we're going to try is Spear of Destiny. And then we can check if the sound works. It detects the sound blaster. 
under killing the enemy, what type of enemy is pictured? So this works fine. Let's try the next game. Next up is a game called Body Blows, which I played way back when. And it's a DOS fighting game, which fits on a single floppy, which is kind of amazing. How? One A2. I'm sorry. Six, seven, seven. Nick, Dan, Junior, Lorey, Jitu, Albi, Maria. Sure. Ow, oh, you with your combos. No, 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 come on. <laughs> Let's do one more game, Blakestone. Perhaps you noticed that one of the sims is missing and I added some active cooling to the um, system because it was having some difficulty writing to the disc. Now maybe this is faulty, perhaps it was overheating, it was getting very hot. Perhaps one of the memory chips is broken, I don't know. It seems to be running more stable now, but I did three things so I have no clue what fixed it. That's uh, that's my bad. Seems to be running fine. Red key, sure. Intruder, medic. How many shots do you need? Intruder. I'm sorry. Intruder. Why do you have a gun? You're a scientist. Whoops. That turns it back on. I'm dead. This works fine. <laughs> this was a close look at this industrial single board computer 486 on which you definitely can play DOS games. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you're a patron, that really helps. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.